नमस्कार एंड वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू यू यूट्यूब चैनल वीएलएसआई फॉर ऑल हब फॉर टेक्निकल एजुकेशन एंड एन एपिसेंटर फॉर अफोर्डेबल वीएलएसआई कोचिंग इन इंडिया टुडे वी आर इंडीड प्राउड एंड ऑनर टू हैव विद अस मिस्टर सचिन चौधरी हु इज करेंटली वर्किंग एज एन एसओसी डिजाइन इंजीनियर एट एनवीडिया ही हैज कंप्लीटेड हिज बीटेक फ्रॉम जेएनटीयू हैदराबाद इन 2017 विद एन एक्सेलेंट एग्रीगेट ऑफ 3.66 ऑन द स्केल ऑफ 4 and masters from the prestigious san jose state university in the usa thank you sir for doing this and giving your time sir with uh -huh. your kind permission can we start the questionnaire so that our audience can know you better sure sure go ahead please yeah coming to the first question sir could you please introduce yourself in more detail so that our audience can take a cue from you and your profile yeah uh, so i've been a uh... intrigue with uh, electronics and communication domain for a longer time uh, before starting my btech so i was intrigued to a uh, semiconductor industry then i uh, after completing my btech i did my masters in same domain with vlsi uh, verification and design so then i chose a verification domain and then that's how it went for me yeah. yes sir yeah how did you manage your co a course work and research like what is the best way to strike a balance between the two as the grad life can be quite hectic especially in the usa that's not true actually uh, see if you're a uh, plan to your masters or uh, something uh, related to research work you need to have a pre plan uh, thing uh, like you need to have a specific if you're going into research uh, field you need to be clear which research field you're going through that will cover your uh, uh, in kind of education as well it will uh, give you a, a new direction as well but if you're going into other domain uh, like uh, projects kind of thing then that will give you an experience with uh, the kind of research that you're going to have in current companies so you need to have balance either uh, you need to decide which domain you need to choose accordingly you can uh, go with research or with this thing okay uh, sir uh, how was your experience at the texas instrument and intel company like what was your preparation strategy like uh, uh, also my follow up question would be uh, where did you work after your btech so uh, i did my uh, certification in natural instruments before so i was i'm i'm a clad certificate uh, uh certified person uh so uh, at natural instruments i was working there as an intern over there and then i just came for masters and then uh in texas instruments i did a uh, formal verification like post silicon stuff and part of formal verification thing and then in intel i was working for uh, a system on chip verification and validation in emulation and simulation both as well so that was great like it was a good exposure over there yes yes sir uh, i i i got to learn about what's and what's not to be done yeah yes sir uh sir one more of my follow up question would be like um, why did you uh, decide to pursue a masters in the us after uh, doing an internship from the ni company the national instrumentation company like what made you choose so there, uh so there is this thing right so after my uh, btech i actually did my gate uh if you many of people might know about the gate uh gate as an examination right so i was an uh, uh national uh, level ranker over there so but after that i planned to uh, like do something in terms of education and uh, since i was doing uh, i'm actually uh, a person who teaches network theory on an academy oh yeah i i have a course work on an, an academy with my name as sachin raj over there so yeah uh, i used to teach uh, them over there and then uh, after that i planned to learn more and then i decided to do a masters but back in india i did not find any good colleges with my rank uh, because i was from uh, we have categories back in india right for open category and stuff like that so 
yeah, I was 3,000 around and that happened and I have decided to come for masters. Oh, that's a roller coaster ride indeed, sir. Uh, also, my next question would be, uh, what role would a guide play in pursuing masters and getting a job thereafter, especially in countries like USA where the market situation is quite tough right now? You need not need any guide. You need not in uh, any guide because hey, uh, depends. Like which domain are you asking for? Uh, especially the VLSI domain because there are like very few people out there. So that one. VLSI domain has uh, different criteria. Like they have physical uh, design and they have uh, post silicon. They have pre silicon. Then they have uh, what we say about uh, fabrication stuff. So which domain are they targeting? I'm I'm into pre silicon so. If you ask me about pre-silicon, I can list out the things that you can prepare back from India before coming over here. Yes, and sir, that will please. actually get you a job. Yes, sir. Please, uh, can you share those list or uh, strategies with that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so prepare with computer architecture thoroughly, especially memory domain, caches and kind of stuff. So there is this uh, site called Udacity. Yeah, that's free of cost. You can prepare from there. Uh, that will be a great, great help. And you need to prepare for uh, OOPS concept, like object-oriented programming. That's the basic. Uh, and system Verilog. Verilog. Uh, Verilog will be a starting point. But try to understand system Verilog with OOPS concept. And uh, you have a verification academy for that. You can go there and just search for it. And try to learn UVM. Universal yes. verification method methodology that will be of great help. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the most pertinent questions I wish to ask you since the beginning of the interview. Uh, why yeah. did you choose to pursue your career in the electronics field when majority of students are shifting to computer science, data science, business analytics <laughs> after the bachelor's? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Like, uh, my dad uh, was from software domain. Uh, he's a software engineer. He has worked in multiple companies. He was a director for Microsoft as well uh, back in Headbutt. So uh, yeah, after seeing him, I decided like, okay, this is not the field I'm going to be working in. Yeah. I don't know. It's a contrast. Uh, it's a kind of contrast. Like he's good with that stuff. I'm good with semiconductor stuff. So I'm like, okay, I will go with this. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Uh, also, my next question would be, uh, how can a young upcoming graduate student like me prepare himself to fa uh, face the MS journey in the USA? And also, how should one prepare or the mindset be the day when he lands in the USA? Because they, the schedule can be quite hectic, new environment and stuff like that. So can you give us a roadmap kind of thing? Like how did you uh, face before preparing for, uh, Before pref uh, preparing for uh, the work culture, uh, like work culture or your semester thing, Prepare mindset that after coming over here in a couple of months, you're going to be having a downfall emotionally. So get over here with friends that uh, are close uh, back in India with you who can guide you really well in terms of uh, maybe emotionally or professionally. So uh, I'm not sure what noise I'm getting back. In, in There's the background. a background. Yes, you can, you can continue, sir. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So, background. thing is like, uh, have an idea about what you need to uh, target on, and meanwhile, there will be some emotional break, uh, emotional things that will come uh, to your thing. That uh, maybe in terms of grades, maybe you are done with your semester and you got a low grade. That thing happens sometimes, right? So that you need to take care of uh, as a, it okay it's okay i i'll make it cover uh coverfully uh, coverfully great in the next semester so that thing you need to work on it and that can be only done from the support back from your friends yes yes sir so friendship and emotional support is very important while pursuing masters kind of yeah uh, you might be talented enough to get through that but yeah this thing helps Yes, yes, sir. Uh, also, uh, one more question is that, like, what sort of preparation is required to get through technical screen and on-site uh, roles for front-end design roles in, like, USA? 
because like most of the colleges or uh, uh, institutes in india they have a culture called placement culture whereas in like uh, in the us it's not so there so is, like there what is nothing, place nothing as of such yeah. yes so like how it would be like is linkedin really helpful or is like there like like other sites how to approach a recruiter or a manager can you give some that one yeah uh, on that note i'll say that uh, after coming to us uh, you'll have a different kind of experience uh, with the interview scenario like linkedin definitely helps because i have uh, gotten jobs from linkedin as of now but uh, there are multiple sites that will help you to get an interview so uh, there is a, a thing which we uh, have seen back in us so it's like uh, for 100 uh, submissions you might get my uh, might be around 15 or uh, 20 calls maximum so that's okay don't worry about that but yeah surely uh, you'll end up with something better yes sir yes sir um also like what is the procedure of hi- uh, hiring while pursuing masters because from the information i researched upon or like what i heard from my seniors uh, i heard that we need to apply for an intern position one year before we like we actually join the company is it true can you please elaborate on that that's not at all true like if you are applying for internship uh, you need to start uh, applying at least like 6 months before so uh, there is this criteria if you have if you are joining in uh, spring right uh, spring or fall uh, maybe uh, let's consider a spring a spring scenario right so you need to start um, by october uh, for applying for a company then uh, you will be getting some uh, internship back from uh, that thing over uh, summer okay so uh, for the fall people they should start applying right away after the land like somewhere in that's, october uh, no no they, they uh, that's the reason i told you if you are a spring person you'll get internship over there because there is criteria over there that that uh, after you come to us you need to at least have 9 months of gap before having a uh, job that might be a full time job or that might be an internship okay. that's a okay. criteria for uh, us okay sir okay yeah uh my next question would be sir uh, do the right selection of college matters while pursuing ms in usa especially Not in the vlsi all. stream or like all yeah, the colleges uh, offer the same course can you please no, guide no. on how you shortlisted so i'll tell you something uh see uh, it doesn't matter which college you go to but if you are try, uh, trying to get into vlsi there are very specific colleges which focuses on uvm uh, universal with a verification methodology not all the university focuses on this thing and also uh, many of them doesn't even teach system at all so there are universities like sacramento state university uh, san jose state university and then portland state university these are few of those universities which actually teach these courses other uh, people doesn't even know about these courses other universities doesn't doesn't even teach about these courses so if you want to come into vlsi specifically into design or verification then try to focus on this kind of universities who has okay. uh, uvm or uh, system vlog uh, courses or either uh, static analysis for physical design static time analysis try to focus on those kind of things yeah yes, uh, and for this thing uh, you can uh, get an information through yorkit.com or maybe contact seniors from linkedin yes yes sir so portland state university sacramento state university san jose state university offer some of the good courses in like vlsi like domain they do yeah yes yes sir uh, also uh one of the most asked frequently asked question is that for the cs domain people there are sites like um, elite code code chef etc but uh, uh, while coming to vlsi domain people especially the design verification validation domain like from where should we practice our question so that we can be interview we, ready or we is it not, like concept based 
we need not need any uh, such kind of thing because we actually have a design uh, if you go just google it for a design code just make a copy of it there is a, an eda uh, playground uh, uh, site right eda playground uh, just copy the code over there you can if you're in verification domain you can just write a verification code and try to debug that thing up or uh, pre create a verification code for that thing. It's as simple as that. See, okay. we have different designs available uh, throughout, right? Yes. Just take one of those designs and try to practice over there. Okay. It's as simple okay. as that. Uh, don't try with uh, multiple things. Just, for example, just take simple things. Try to uh, make a ver verification code for a mux. Mm. multiplexer to buy uh, to buy for uh, just something like that yes yes sir just take a simple design and uh, try to uh, maybe de uh, design it or uh, verify it using a very log or system very log or mm -hmm. try to get into system very log with uvm that will work out Yes, sir. Uh, since you were like uh, uh, working in the NVIDIA and you worked before in Intel and Texas Instrument, like what are the common mistakes you found out like from your end and, and from the candidate's perspective, like with respect to resume uh, uh, making or like the skills required to get into a VLSI domain job? So the what thing is, uh, see with resume, people don't understand that they need to be as true as they can. Right. So if you're saying you know about APB, ASV plus, you need to understand how it works. I square C, you need to know how I square C works, right? To and fro. So when I ask question, people go blank usually. So with resume, you need to be really clear enough that whatever you're writing over there, you are representing yourself over there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, also, one more question is that uh, there is always a complaint from the student community that uh, that there's no linkage from like of what is being taught in the class and what the industry expects. Like, how would you address this issue? So I didn't get you what? Uh, there's always a complaint from the student community that like whatever is being taught in the class is not relevant to the industry standards or like what the industry expects from the job market. Like, how would you address this issue? Over here or back in India? Like, both ways. So, back in India, it was never re relevant. I am pretty sure you are aware of it, right? Yes, yes, sir, that is true. <laughs> yeah. So, over here, the thing is like, you are not... Uh, whenever you go to a class over here, it's something like, they'll give you a basic idea, then there will be assignments, where you will be grilled. And uh, uh, compared to India, here, uh, entire semester is divided into uh, percentages based uh, academic uh, grade. So on basis of assignment, maybe if around 15% you'll be graded based on your uh, other curricular thing, you'll be graded another 15%. Rest of the thing will be on exams that you give. So you'll be focused towards this thing. You'll try to learn. Uh, yes, sir. Am I? Uh, did I answer your question or not? Uh, you answered partially, sir. Like I was looking for an answer that uh, we could, like where you could guide us about some resources or books as such, for like beginners kind of thing, maybe. For so beginners kind of thing, uh. See, uh, get thorough with Compact first and then try to uh, get into this thing. And if you want to really get into VLSI domain, so get started with Verilog and uh, HLS, high-level synthesis, using Python. Try to learn one, at least, scripting language. Okay. 
Yes, sir. So Perl and Python would be sufficient. Perl or Python, maybe. Any any of this. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, but companies like uh, Texas Instrument uses C as of now as well for that thing. Just saying. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. Uh, so it was really great talking to you, sir. As a young graduate student myself, I feel that many jigsaw puzzles in the mind have been clarified. I hope to see you on yet another uh, episode on our YouTube channel. Until then, goodbye, sir. And the audience, take care. Signing off, this is Anurag. Thank you. Thanks, man. Bye. Take care.